Pre-tribulational theology says that there will be a rapture, then seven years of tribulation, and then another return. If this is true, then we have to find out which verses are talking about the return and which ones are talking about the rapture. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Is the angel talking about the rapture or the second coming? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. For the pre-tripper to say that the rapture is a silent event, there is an awful lot of noise occurring in this one verse. Trumpets, voices of an archangel, shouting. This is not consistent with a silent rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Does this event occur at the rapture or the second coming? A pre-tribber will say that this verse must be talking about the rapture. But wait a second, it says at the last trump. The rapture cannot be then because the trumpets don't occur until the end. So how do the pre-tribbers explain these multiple returns when the Bible clearly says that these events will happen in the same day? Also, the Bible says that there will only be two mass resurrections of both the just and the unjust. Again, mathematically, this can't fit into the pre-trib scenario. So here's how they do it. They say that the first resurrection comes in three phases. The first phase of the resurrection was of Jesus and the Old Testament saints. The second phase will be of the church just prior to the tribulation. And finally, the resurrection of the tribulation saints during the end of the tribulation. It sounds good on paper and looks impressive on a chart. The problem is the Bible does not support such an assertion. Again, there is a dilemma with the totals when you have two second comings and three phases of a first resurrection. What if you could locate where the first resurrection is in the Bible and what's happening around it? If the dead in Christ rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Also, note the word remain. The dictionary defines the word remain as what's left after all else has been removed or destroyed. This verse is obviously referring to the rapture because it says we are caught up. But if you have other people getting saved during the tribulation, then this word remain does not fit. And if you could know for a fact that the Bible is talking about the first resurrection, would you not have a better understanding of when these events occur? Revelation 20 verses 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast neither his image, neither had received his mark in their foreheads or in their hands. Now, can there be any doubt in your mind that this verse is taking place during the tribulation? In fact, at this point, we are near the end of the sixth seal. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that taketh part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. Here it is, solid proof of when the first resurrection occurs. If the dead in Christ rise first, well, you'll just have to do the rest of the math. It could also be said by the diehard pre-tribbers that all of these verses have been cherry-picked to prove the post-trib position. Well. Be that as it may, but what if we could ask Jesus himself when these things will happen? 
Would he or could he actually tell us if the rapture occurs before the tribulation or after? Let's find out. Matthew 24. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, let no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. If any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other.